everybody, welcome back. This is Firehaven, my name is Rob. I wanted to show you the uh, whip scorpions that I have. They are also called amblypigeons. It's different than what my vinegaroon is. The, the vinegaroon is sometimes called a whip spider or scorpion because it looks sort of scorpion-like, but they're very different because the thing about a a vinegaroon is they have some type of a tail on the end of them. These guys are blunt tailed. So amblypigid actually means blunt tail. So these are a type of an arachnid. They hang out really in caves, dark places, moist on... Sorry, I said the M word, but that's why I keep them in, in a more of a Tupperware type of enclosure. As you can see the, the water that's all built up on the side of this thing they don't drink from cotton balls, they don't drink from cups. They get most of their water from the insects that they eat or they will squeegee the water right off the side of this enclosure and drink it right up. It's really cool to watch. Uh, in order to keep the uh, humidity as, as high as I do, I keep the thing entirely closed but I only put five little holes drilled into the top. That way, there's sort of an internal uh, moisture gradient inside. It's going to be a little more moist. I did it again, I'm sorry. A little more wet on this side, a little more dry on this side. And that way, they can choose what side they want to be on. Uh, so I'm going to open this bad boy up. Not that you can see anything at this point. But what I tend to do is I put the screen on the top of this thing because they love to hang. When these guys eventually find that it's time to molt, what they do is they cling on to a mesh or cork bark, something that's rough. They will hold on for dear life and then start breaking apart and sliding themselves out of their old uh, exoskeleton. So with these guys, uh, they will they will actually hang there and then when it comes time to that they get all of their little legs out they will then reach over their old exoskeleton and hold on until they harden up so I keep the mesh on the top but then right below I keep a mesh right here so that if they were to fall they'd fall very slightly so even though this is not the most beautiful enclosure it's the most functional type of enclosure I could think of for this type of, a, of an arachnid. I'm going to keep a substrate at the bottom. It's nothing like what you would need for a millipede. It's just something that retains the moisture really well. The plant is really just aesthetics. What you mainly want to have for an enclosure like this is multiple places to hang on to and a place to hide. I have two male uh, whip scorpions in here. They get along just fine. They don't fight. They don't try to get dominance. They just need to have two different places to hang out. So with the cork bark, you don't want to lay it down. You want to put it in a horizontal fashion so that they can just hang out right on, right on it. I mean, they're hanging out together, but you want to give them a couple places to hang out. And as you can see, they're moving their um, modified leg around. They're feeling for what's going on in the area. I can put my hand here and it will know that I'm there. So these guys, these guys are, they can be flighty, but they have no way of biting, they have no venom, they have no stinger. They are essentially a puppy dog Aww. of the arachnid kingdom. This one is a Tanzanian tailless whip scorpion. This one, as you can see, only has one moving whip. It must have gotten into an argument and it broke its little whip off. When it molts, it will get its whip back. When it's ready, it'll pull, it'll make a little gelatinous whip and it'll be back to good. Uh, one quick note that I just thought of is, is in order to know if you have a male or a female, 
you only need to look at their pedipalp right here. As you can see, this pedipalp on the front is longer than its first set of legs here that's moving around so wildly. If it's longer than that first leg, it's likely a male. If it's the same size or shorter, it's likely a female. But that's the strongest indicator of what uh, gender of whip spider you have. So I'm going to put him back, but just so you have an idea, they do like to... I mean, they don't mind being handled as long as you don't make quick movements. They're always assessing their um, uh, in environment. So I'm going to put this guy back. And while I'm thinking about it, just know these guys don't move front to back. They always tend to move side to side. So even if I come up on the front, he's probably going to want to go side to side, kind of like a crab. That's just how they're built. I've had a heck of a time trying to rustle these guys up because they never go on your hand like you want. So you almost have to force them to go in a forward motion. Now, so like I said with the horizontal cork bark, you're going to probably want to have some type of a hollow cork bark for them to hang out in. Um, because they don't like the light, so they, they want to have a place where they can hang out away from the light completely. What I've noticed with an enclosure like this that has a high humidity pain in the butt to have to take care of. So what I do is, on top of having the whips in here, I will add uh, springtails to eat up the mold, and I'll add isopods or roly-polies to get the leftover crud that's left behind. So as you can see, it's pretty clean. There's no mold. It's, it's beautiful dirt. I love it. But the only reason why is because I have a cleanup crew inside this tank that takes care of the dirty work. Um, so you, you, with something that's this size, you want to feed them pinhead crickets. You could even go with something that's a small cricket, but nothing that's even a third of the size of what these guys are, because they can be a bit skittish. They, they're gonna, and they're nocturnal as well, so you're really only gonna see these guys eat at night. If you are not a night owl and you don't like to check on your bugs, this may not be the bug for you. Because you're gonna come in anywhere between midnight and 4 a.m. to check on these guys and see how they're doing. Um, but really you could throw two to four small crickets in here, leave them alone for a week, and they'll be just fine. Any more than that, you'll probably overfeed them. Um, they will look a little skinny if you're not feeding them enough. So there's a bit of a gray area. Too much or too little. Really, as you get to know your whip, the more you'll know what their feeding habits are. I, I tend to only mist this container about once a week. I misted this two days ago and the water droplets are still on here. So I know that the room I have in here, even though it seems warm because I have reptiles, it's not so warm that the water is all going to evaporate. I want to make sure that I can see a little bit of this white cloudy area on the bottom on the substrate that lets me know that, the, that it's wet enough for the bottom but it's not so wet that it's going to be murky and uh, smelly in there. So I think that's um, mostly what I think is the most necessary information about the whip spider, whip scorpion, amblyp pigeon. Um, there isn't a right or a wrong way to take care of these guys. I think you just need to keep your finger on the pulse with how you feel you're doing with them. Uh, I know it's kind of a general thing to say, but with with invertebrates, there isn't necessarily a right or a wrong way. If you're like me and you have multiple ones, you're going to get to know what works best for each type of uh, arachnid or invertebrate you have. 
they're just a little more special as far as humidity goes because they come from primarily a humid location, tropical and subtropical. You're going to want to keep them a little more wet in there. But I've been told there are some amblypigids that come from drier regions. They just live in caves and they don't need the moisture. So, anywho, that's my, uh, my amblypigids or whip scorpions. Later on, I'm going to show you a video of my female that has a couple different things about it that's different, which I'm excited to show you. So if you enjoyed this video and you think that the Amblypidget is a good pet like I do, please give me a like somewhere, give me that ringy bell thing over here, and subscribe so you can keep watching. And if you have any questions about these guys or any others that you've seen from videos, just Throw me a quick comment, I'll answer back, and uh, keep your eyes on my channel, and uh, I'll keep you in the loop. Uh, this has been Firehaven, my name's Rob. You guys have a great... Everything.